Um, at. Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to my journey through Lambda School. I am Lucas Baysmore, and we are on week two, day two of Lambda School. So today was a doozy of a day. We went over relative sizing on fonts and percentages for sizing elements. We went over um, a portfolio project that we did today. We went over accessibility and we worked with GitHub pages to host our own portfolio project. So ton of stuff that I'm gonna go over with you today. And um, what I was gonna say is that I think I'm gonna break these videos up into different chunks now. So I'm gonna start with what we went through over the day, some of the things that I learned, in the second part, what we'll do is we'll talk about some of the resources that um, I kind of gathered through the day because there are just so many resources, links to things that are just so useful. And then lastly, I'll talk about the future and kind of what the future holds. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, so today we started with responsive design two. So like I said, we were working with uh, relative positioning on things. This included um, learning about AMs, which are rel relative positioning and sizing to the parent context, or element, the root EM or REMS, which is relative sizing to the root element. So if we define our font size to be, you know, 20 pixels, and then we did REMS or two REMS, it would make it 40 pixels. Same thing with M's, but it's related to the parent div. And learning about how pixels is probably not the best way to do it specifically for the next thing that we learned, which was accessibility. Things related to how our users are interacting with our site that may be suffering from some sort of disability, whether that is color blindness or color deficiencies, whether that's uh, impaired seeing, whether um, and they need you know really big font sizes, or if they're completely seeing impaired, and that, that la, 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 la. And we need to make sure that the screen readers that they're using are able to actually see what it is our website is saying. So we didn't go too terribly deep into that, but the one thing that we did go into was talking about um, how naughty naughty pixels are in terms of screen reader, uh, in terms of default browser font sizes. So mine is at medium right now, but if I were to set my, if I go to settings, and I were to set my default font to something, let's say, like extra large, then everything else is going to end up being extra large relative to that. So if I did font size very large, it's going to make everything bigger. And if we see Lambda School site, it's also responsive to that. So the default sizing becomes much bigger. If you use pixels, that basically negates it. And so we don't want to use pixels because if someone needs the larger font sizes, we want to make sure that our fonts are moving relative to the user's browser. So that was actually something that I had no idea about that I thought was really, really good uh, to learn, but also, you know, kind of that, kind of the default nature with which developers need to build, which is not building for ourselves, but building for others. And so that was really cool. So the next thing that we went over, which trust me, it was amazing. So we had to build our own portfolio project. That we used this wonderful site, html5up.net. This guy that created this site is also the creator of card.co. I wish he sponsored this video because I love card.co. I'm gonna give a little plug in for here. It's 10 bucks a year and it is a drag and drop interface on building a one page site for pretty much anything. Best way to describe this site. He takes these html5 templates that he's built here that are free, open source, anybody can grab them and use them. And he makes them accessible uh, for 10 bucks a month to host it. So you don't have to worry about hosting or worrying about any of that. If you just need a simple site for yourself, jump onto here, super easy to use, hyper intuitive as well. So same guy that made that was making this, which we used to make, what I'll show you here, is our portfolio pages. Before I dive into that, I had this atrocity of a website for my personal page. Not dynamic, not accessible, not and uh, responsive. It's just, it's not terrible, but it's pretty ugly. So 
with the template that I got here from HTML5, I think I grabbed the, um, well, I can't remember which one I grabbed, but regardless, this, oh no, where'd it go? Oh, sorry, I've got it running on a server here. So this is actually what I've got, which was really, really cool to build. So I took everything that was in here and I shoved it back into here with some updated images. And now I've got a fully responsive site that I've plugged in some other information, but this is also fully responsive as well. So with very little that I had to do, I was able to get a fully responsive site up and running. And I had to make some edits here on like these links to get them to work properly and some style differences. One of the things that I learned was actually about background attachments. So, so as you scroll, you can see how my image stays fixed. That was something else that I had to research to learn how to do but really, really intuitive and easy. I'm gonna take a short pause here and just do another plug for Lambda School. I'm seven days in to this Lambda School journey and I am shocked at how much I am able to do even though I thought I knew what I, even though I thought I knew about all of this and my knowledge has just been uh, just accelerated at a rate that I didn't know was possible. So seven days in being able to build this and not just build it in a you know kind of haphazard way but with real kind of thought behind what i'm doing so really really excited to see what's kind of moving forward it's kind of like this constant little dopamine hit um you know it's you know you challenge yourself and then you get a dopamine hit you challenge yourself and you get another dopamine hit so anyway good stuff there okay so the other thing that was really cool is we actually learned about GitHub pages. So while right now the way this works is I have to wait for my team lead to merge my pull request in to my master branch, which if you have watched my previous videos, I may have already explained this before, but I have to wait for that in order for my GitHub pages to actually work live. So technically I've got it here on portfolio, pay portfolio website, I just committed the base stuff, so this isn't going to be live with everything, but you can see how basically the default template of this, let me just go ahead and modify everything so that that way on my dev side, I've got some of the things that I want. And we'll be filling these projects out over the next couple of weeks. It'll be really, really fun to do. So looking forward to seeing how this um, builds out over time. So now I will kind of go into the uh, resources side of things that I've been using. So the first one that we had here, and I'm going to, of course, link all of these in the description, but just understanding what it is, the EMs versus REMs versus pixels, great in-depth kind of conversation on this, again, related to accessibility. Then there was some CSS functions, this was actually more related to the HTML setup on some of these pages, but um, good to understand these functions and how they work, it's particularly calc. And if you're doing animations, cubic bezier, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I don't know, but some good information there. Let me see. Oh, and then our resources on our accessibility. So um, this is Berkeley website on web accessibility. This is a moving, moving video by Apple on accessibility. I'm not even being sarcastic. I shed a little bit of a tear. Uh, it was very well done. Then you've got W3 on their accessibility standards on making sure that, you know, you've got enough contrast. You're using icons as not just colors to display how things are, you know, whether they're confirmed or not. Good standards there. Another medium guide on that. This is the, um, actually, sorry, I'm from Texas. So this is some Texas accessibility standards. Um, another thing on pixels, EMs versus REMs and the viewport, which were really helpful. And then this 15 minute video on accessibility. So really good resources on all of this. I was able to kind of dive into some of it today to really learn into it. The last <laughs> to two other resources. So I currently use Atom as my editor. There were two, um, there were two packages that I installed today. The first one was just Atom Live Server. With a quick keystroke, I'm actually able to pull up a server in any other project, which is what I'm doing here. 
uh, so that way I've got live reloads and I've got what we went into a little bit today, I did, but which will be more tomorrow, is less. So CSS preprocessor, it needs to be compiled, you need a server to do it. So had to get a server running in order to do that. So Atom live server, I'll link that as well. And then my personal favorite, which I will show you here. So if you ever need a paragraph or and you need some information, usually you do lorem ipsum, right? You do like that and it'll give you some default text. Well, as you can see, I'm a Rick and Morty fan. There's a wonderful pl plugin called lorem rixum. And all you gotta do is type in rixum and it'll pull out a wonderful Rick and Morty quote for you. And you can use that as your filler text. So highly would recommend that plugin or that package. So that's all I've got for the um, resources for today. Still jam packed full of information, learned a lot today. Um, now we'll move on to the future and we're here. So for the future, really, I'm going to just finish up this, this website here. I want to focus on being able to have a cal carousel kind of gallery of this information. So right now, all it does is just load up a, you know, pop up light box version of this. Uh, and I want to be able to make that a carousel. So that way I can click through and see other images as opposed to just some of them, just the next project. But that will be in the works. Aside from that, I mentioned the previous project on the Jibber Jobber. I'm actually going to start on that this weekend when I've got time. Uh, Kendall Mont will be out of town, so I will have plenty of time to work on it. So I'll be super excited for that. Oh, and I haven't done this yet, but I lived out of my truck for nine months. So the last thing is that because I'm moving, all of my stuff is in the back of my truck right now. And I'm currently living with my girlfriend in her apartment until we move into our apartment together coming up here in two weeks. So in the next couple of weeks, you'll see me in a new place. Um, forgive me in terms of the delays for these videos, trying to get them out as soon as I record them, but life happens. So today you're going to get two bad boys, this one, and then another one. So with that, I appreciate you watching the video. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, if you're curious about anything else, um, feel free to comment below. I'm more than happy to uh, share with my experience or anything else so far. Um, thinking about doing a video on how to prepare for day one of Lambda School. Uh, if you're interested in that, let me know and I'm more than happy to make that video for you guys. Thank you. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll catch you next time.